Hi, and welcome to the studio. In this painting demonstration, you'll see the first and second pass on the eyes and nose of this painting titled Nova. The entire painting is 65 by 45 inches. Now, because it's a fairly big painting, I sped up the recording um, so that you know it doesn't take up all of your time. Um, but hopefully you can still kind of see the general process. If you enjoy this, I actually filmed the entire process of painting this from start to finish, and that's available on my website. So I'll link below um, so you can look into that if that's of interest. For this painting, I used my typical palette, uh, and that will be in the description below as well. And I find it to be just a really great palette for painting skin and flesh. For this video and demonstration, I wanted to focus mostly on a few kind of strategies or philosophies that were really integral to creating this painting. The first one is the difference between the first pass and the second pass and kind of how to approach both of those uh, stages of the paintings with a different mindset. The second one is creating a sense of volume and form rather than prioritizing the, the contour, the silhouette, or the outline. The first pass is basically the first coat of paint on the canvas or on your ground. Uh, that isn't the underpainting. So right now you can see a lot of the you know area has been painted but there are still these kind of orange parts coming through and that's the underpainting. So I painted that beforehand and it's mostly kind of a value study in order to set the drawing and the values up so I don't have to do that while painting. It also gives a nice glow to the painting and I think it's a really integral part of it. So the first pass is that first coat of paint. And over the years, I've kind of changed my approach with it. I started off by not paying as much attention on the first pass, really doing it kind of quickly and kind of undetailed. I used big blocky brush strokes, uh, didn't do much softening or blending, and used it as a way of just kind of covering the underpainting. With more practice and as my style developed and changed, I ended up putting more work in the first pass and spending less time in the second pass. For me, I find that gives a really different look to the painting and a different feel for actually painting it too. With the first pass being more complete, let's say, more detailed, uh, more precise, it takes longer for one. Um, so I'd say, I don't know, 70% of the work is done in the first pass. Uh, so it requires a little bit of patience in that way and a little more care, let's say. It also maintains the freshness of the paint. And by freshness, I mean not just keeping the paint wet, but kind of getting a sense of how the paint was applied and not having it be uh, overly polished or refined. With putting in a full effort and attention to a lot of components of the painting in the first pass, some areas don't need a second pass. So that means that what you'll see in the final painting, in the final version, the finished painting, will actually be what was painted in that first pass and not adjusted. And I think there's something really kind of beautiful about that. Applying paint 
is a record of your hand motions and you know the paint you mixed um, how you were feeling that day and i think leaving that exposed to a certain degree can bring a sense of intimacy between the viewer and the painting There are also some details that are really difficult, if not impossible, to do in the first pass, and they almost require multiple layers. So a second pass is there if you need it, but again, sometimes it's, it's nice to just leave it alone and not do much in the second pass. And that means the painting doesn't need to be that detailed. I try to remember that detail is always optional. A painting doesn't need detail in order to be impactful or successful. It needs, you know, color harmony, it needs structure, it needs a good composition, you know, a strong idea. But it doesn't necessarily need detail. So working with the first pass kind of prevents the detail from taking over the painting. And it really allows the painting to become a record of the conversation between the artist, the brush, the surface, and the paint. I think there's something kind of beautiful about that. You'll see how much work is done in the first pass and in the second pass for this particular section um, later on. And neither approach is you know, better or worse than the other. It's really just about what gives the effect that you like and what also gives the experience that you like. Painting is not about necessarily creating a painting you know creating that finished work of art I mean of course on some level it is but if it's just about creating a picture there are many more efficient ways to do that uh, photography being one of them and painting really is not that efficient so to me it has to be about more than just creating the image it's also about the experience of it and enjoying the hours and hours spent on it. So having an approach that works for you and keeps you engaged, keeps you interested, um, and makes that time worthwhile really, I think, makes a difference and is kind of an important part of it. So here's the first pass on the eyes and nose finished. Now in the second pass, I'll be doing a little bit of work on the eyes, mostly just to change the shapes actually, not to really add much detail. And I'll spend more time on the nose to kind of sculpt it a little bit more and get the shape to be more accurate. But again, the, the eyes aren't necessarily detailed. We get the structure of them and you know the sense of them, that little bit of eye contact. But small details like individual eyelashes, things like that, those aren't those aren't necessary. Um, not not in the way I paint, anyways. <laughs> so now in the second pass, I'm starting with the nose, again, just kind of sculpting it and shaping it a bit more. So we'll kind of think about the you know the first pass versus second pass, and in the second pass. It's really about correction, development, um, adding detail where needed, correcting anything that couldn't be done in the first pass or wasn't done to your level of satisfaction. Now, the other concept that I wanted to discuss for this demonstration is the sense of volume and form. So volume uh, is, you know, volume, three-dimensional space. And form is, that's exactly what form is too. It's basically the three-dimensional space versus two-dimensional. So in a painting or drawing, if we're looking for depth, we're actually creating the illusion of form. 
Form does not really exist in two dimensions, so we're trying to give the impression that it does. And that's not the only way of painting, of course. You can paint in a very flat way, a uh, very color saturated way. There's lots of different styles, so I'm not trying to say that this is superior. It's just the way I was approaching this particular painting. Creating a sense of volume and form is, of course, about values, you know, lights and darks, shading, that, that kind of thing. Uh, color shifts and, you know, that can get a little complex, but it's, it's very effective. Um, but what I want to talk about in, in this particular video is disrupting the silhouette or the contour and applying paint deliberately. With the contour or the silhouette, that's basically like the outline of the object or figure in the painting. And if you look at the big final version of the painting in that um, right hand bottom corner, you'll see there are areas, particularly on the outside edge of the figure, where I've sort of disrupted that form, uh, where I've, I've broken it up and brought some of the background colors into it. Now we don't necessarily need attention to those outside contours because that's not how we perceive form in real life. If you're looking at a person and talking to them, usually you're focused on their face or their, their eyes, their mouth, something like that, rather than on you know the exact curve of their shoulder. We can only focus on one area at a time. So if the entire painting is in focus, then nothing's really in focus because nothing is prioritized. You can take a lot of liberty with the outer contours in breaking them up, softening them off, not having them be very precise, and it actually works beautifully in a painting. So if that's something you're interested in experimenting with, uh, don't be shy about breaking up those contours and kind of seeing what happens. Especially when working from a photo, it's really easy to get very attached to the contours uh, because they're so static and clear in a photo. And it can feel kind of scary sometimes to let go of them. But once you do, it opens up so many possibilities for the painting and also lessens the dependence on the photo reference. Now I just want to mention briefly, there's a little glitch with the recording with the nose ring here. Obviously I've painted it in and then painted it out and didn't record that part. Um, just so you're aware, it'll, it'll come back. Um, but about the contour and the photo reference and just kind of playing around with that. Um, you know, the photo is just a source of information. It's not a standard against which to hold your painting. And playing around with the contours can really help, I think, um, break away from that. Brushwork and paint texture and application are also effective ways of getting a sense of form and volume. So in the close-up video part here, you can see the texture on the face, on the portrait. And kind of notice how the paint has been applied in different directions, uh, just based on the planes of the face and how to best sculpt them. In my opinion, texture is part of oil paint. The paint itself has body and structure to it almost and that's that's an important part and I don't want to smooth it all out and avoid that so by using the texture it really helps to create a sense of form and kind of takes one of the strength of oil strengths of oil paint uh, and really makes it a primary part of the painting I know a lot of people don't necessarily like the texture of oil paint and want to smooth it all out, um, but to me that's kind of fighting against the nature of paint. 
and I'd rather actually work with the texture. So think about the direction of the brush strokes, you know, the kind of brush you're using, whether it's soft, whether it's more bristly, uh, what kind of texture it leaves. You know, the direction of the paint, if you're going to use texture, then have it be deliberate. And use that as a way of creating that sense of form and volume. It makes painting more fun, in my opinion, and um, just is really effective and a beautiful visual and tactile experience. So here's the final version of the portrait. You can kind of see how, again, it's, it's structured but not detailed. There's a sense of texture, a sense of form and volume. And the second pass was not really about creating that much more detail, but just doing some minor corrections. And here's the final finished painting. I had a lot of fun with this one, um, especially in breaking up the contour and the silhouette and kind of playing with color as well. Sometimes by actually stepping away from some parts of realism, you can almost get a more realistic feel. I really wanted to visualize the figure as a three-dimensional being in space, and I hope that that came across here. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll answer. And if you enjoyed watching this painting to come together, I have the entire painting process recorded and available on my website. Thanks so much and happy painting. Visit NicoleSleethAtelier.com for art courses, demos, and more.